This is my final presentation for visual literacy. The a quick overview of the class I chose to focus on is my intro level architecture class. At my school, we have three different levels of architecture, um, and we have the most students in our intro level. We have four sections of it, so I spend a lot of my time developing things for this class, so that's why I chose it. It is a year-long course, which is a little bit different than most of our elective classes. They're usually only a semester long, so it is really nice that I really get to know my students throughout the year, and that kind of changes my outlook on the assignment that I created. Um, this class is an intro level, but I have freshmen through senior in this class, so there's a wide ra range of skills and learning disabilities that I have to think about when I develop my work. Uh, so something that I really try to do is incorporate as much visuals as possible. And then just kind of the setting that our classroom is in is very similar to the picture that you you're seeing it's a computer lab students are sitting in rows um, they can't really move around it's not a flexible space because we are on desktops overview of the assignment that I wanted to work on um, improving is our dimensioning assignment so this is at the end of our uh, year so my students have really worked on um, the software and how to develop homes and this is a really technical and challenging skill uh, so what students have to do is what you're seeing is an example here they have created a home uh, with interior spaces and they have to add these three tiers of dimensioning on all sides of their home and all levels of their home so this is kind of the end result and every single person's floor plan is different so everyone's dimensions look different so it's really hard for my students to catch their mistakes because one it is a newer challenging skill Scale, and they can't just look at their neighbors and see if they did it right or not. Overview of the technology that we use. Um, in this class, we use Google Slides, um, or excuse me, in the Google Suite. We're on Google Classroom. So I chose to develop a Google presentation so that my students have access to it after we go through this improved activity. Um, and then the software that they are using is Autodesk Revit. Autodesk Revit is a 3D modeling software that um, is newer, I guess, in the architecture community compared to other softwares like AutoCAD. Uh, this software is really cool because it's three-dimensional. So my students, um, when they draw a line, they're actually creating a three-dimensional wall with a height to it. And I'll show you that here right now. So I'll click into the software, just kind of give you a little preview of what it can do. So this is Revit. Um, this is actually my house that I redesigned on the computer. And you'll notice it kind of it can create a three-dimensional home. You can change color schemes. You can put furniture on the inside, landscaping on the outside, and things like that. So that's the software that we use in this class. All right, so diving into the activity that I actually created, this is the first slide that my students will see, and it's just kind of describing the activity that we're going to do. Uh, so on the right-hand side, you'll notice that I gave them a visual. So this visual that they're seeing is what they should have open to make them prepared for the game. So that's their IMAX screens, that's the Revit on it. They should be on the floor plan, as you're seeing here. They should be in floor plan mode see their dimensions, um, and then they should have some post-it notes on their table next to them. So while they're looking at this visual, I kind of explain the game. So I'm all about kind of making things competitive to get students engaged and have some fun with it. Um, so students will have to uh, go through a series of common things that occur incorrectly with their dimensions. So I've done this assignment quite a few times and they're, I'm always handing them back. Students never get their dimensions done correctly the first time around. So I, the hope is that this activity will kind of find some of those mistakes that my students normally wouldn't catch on to since it's such an advanced skill and hopefully they'll fix them before they turn them into me and that there's less sent feedback and me sending them back and them redoing. Um, the hope is that they just submit it and it's done correctly the first time. So every time a student um, checks um, at their work and they don't have to redo anything, they put a post-it note on top of their computer screen. The person in the row with the most post-it notes at the end, meaning that they've done the most things correct, uh, wins candy at the end of the game. So that's kind of how this activity is working. 
So before we even start, um, this, ac this assignment has two rubrics to it. One is for the room tags um, and design, and then one is for the actual dimensions themselves. So I broke up the presentation into two parts, and the way that those are broken up is just by showing those rubrics. So in the very beginning, they're seeing the rubrics again. It's a visual. They've seen these before. It reminds them that, hey, you're not just turning in work. You need to check off a rubric as well. So we kind of go through some things um, on this rubric in the next few slides and they make sure that they have it all done. So here is an example of one of the slides that um, we I prepared. So something that you'll notice on these slides is that there's just short, sweet, to the point text up at the top. So in your bedrooms, does your entire square footage equal 100 square feet, including your closet? And then I give them a visual. A visual. So this is the incorrect visual. So if I add up my bedroom and my closet, it's only equaling 99 square feet. They know from day one that it has to be 100 square feet. That's the minimum regulation for a bedroom. Um, and then this is the correct example here. So they have 100 square feet. So some things that I incorporated learning from this visual literacy class is color. So color um, and and color and symbols um, are um, color can be very symbolic. So we all know red is stop and correct, uh, don't move forward kind of um, kind of meanings to it. So I used red for the incorrect side, and then the correct side I used green. So like a stop, like go, proceed further. You're correct. Uh, so I used green on the correct side. And then just a red X. X is very common as a incorrect or wrong uh, symbol. And then a check mark is good. Um, so those are some of the visual literacy keys that I used in this presentation. Um, an additional thing that I used was additional text. So all of my text throughout this, I use very simplistic text. According to Moline, you only want to use simplistic text when you want your readers to really focus and engage in your text. You're not trying to grab their and, um, attention or maybe set a certain mood or attitude. This is for them to read. It's informational. So I keep, kept all my text in Arial font. Um, so in my additional text, I also made sure that additional text was short, sweet, concise, and then I kept it if it was um, flagging things that you will do incorrectly, I made it red, or if it's flagging things that you might do correctly, I made it green. Um, so I just kind of kept that theme, that color scheme throughout to make it easy for my students. Um, so it's kind of the same thing throughout as you go through this presentation. Um, and then my hope is at the end that I would just get feedback. So this is at the end of the year. Um, I've anytime um, I do an activity. I always get feedback from my students in the beginning of the year. I have them do a Google form, so and it's anonymous, so they feel comfortable giving me feedback. But by the end of the year, they're really open with me. They understand that I'm just looking to improve things for future students. So then we would have a discussion at the end of this to see what they liked and didn't like, and then I would make edits from there. Um, so that's kind of the overview of this activity that I developed, and my hopes is that I would look at data and that... Um, the first time students turn in their dimensioning assignment that it is they're getting much higher grades than before when I would have to send them back and forth and it'd be a constant conversation because they would miss all these little tips and tricks. So that concludes my final um, presentation.